Before we jump into this teardown, I need to warn you guys, if you see a reply to any of your comments in any of my videos and the profile picture of the person that replies looks like mine, but instead it says, congratulations, you've been selected or you've won so-and-so free thing, please text this telegram number. It is not me. That is some soulless, spineless degenerate that is trying to scam you for money or your personal information. This has been covered on other YouTube channels that I've seen, and I delete it and report it and hide user from channel, and they keep making new accounts and doing this over and over again. So if you see one of those replies, just report it or tell me about it, and I'll make or tag me in it, and I'll jump right on it. I try to spend as much time as I can to remove all that stuff as quickly as possible. Uh, we can't let those guys win. I'm not really sure what I can do about this permanently, but this is how we fight the good fight. Now onto the teardown. Today we're going to take apart another Subaru engine, this time a chain engine, not a belt engine like I've done before. This is an FA20 from a 2013 through 16 Subaru BRZ or Scion FRS. It's a two liter direct injected and port injected dual overhead cam naturally aspirated boxer four and it makes about 200 horsepower. These cores are actually kind of tough to find and it's not that they don't go bad, it's just that there's a core charge on them most of the time and they end up going back to the salvage yard or back to the dealership and I don't get my hands on them. But I was over at my friend Cody and Eric's shop and this was sitting in the back and now it's mine. These engines have two very widely known failure modes. The one you'll hear about the most is the valve springs. The valve springs fail, they break, they drop valves, pistons crash into valves, crash into other valves, and you have lots of malice in the combustion palace. There's actually a nationwide campaign to replace these valve springs. They do it with the engine in the car. And when we get this engine apart, we will be able to tell if this has the recalled valve springs or the replacement valve springs. The other failure mode that is very common on these is something we see on the channel quite a bit. No one ever checks their oil. There's a dipstick, it's, it's right there. Just, just check it. And the FRS and BRZ crowd, the, it's, a, it's a younger crowd, and, and I'm not gonna say anything bad about that. It's just that these cars aren't driven like your grandpa's town car, and you couple that with running them low on oil, and you need an engine. Now I did get a bit of a story with this core. I know that it has over 100,000 miles on it and it ran enough to pull itself inside the shop to get replaced. I also know that it made a bunch of racket and ran very bad. So let's see if we can kind of get an idea of the noises it made. Come in. Well, Someone invited Rodney Barrington out of the party. The next thing we're going to do is remove the coils so we can get the plugs out. There's so little. Well, I don't see any bent straps, bent electrodes. Everything looks pretty normal. They're all about the same. I don't see anything yet. Let's get this alternator out of the way. It's an alternator. Next, we're gonna remove this cover, which shields the high pressure fuel pump. Whoa there. That one was tight. So there's the high pressure pump, and there's the low pressure port injectors. I say low pressure relatively. Let's see if this unplugs pretty easily. What kind of Houdini clips are these? Well, there's one side. Oh, it went back in. That wasn't too bad. Well, let's take a minute and disconnect some of these harness connectors. Okay. 
Now this harness is cut in a few places, but I'm still going to be nice with it. It's just a force of habit, I suppose. All right, I don't know if I can get to, looks like I might be able to get to all the bolts, but I need to take this apart. Actually, I need to take this off first. We're just dropping everything. I just snake this harness out of the way here. I think, yes, like so. All right, now I should be able to get to some. I need to take this 10 millimeter out here. And I should be able to get access to all the bolts that hold the intake down. Ah, uh, yes. All right, it all looks pretty easy now. Well, that's all the bolts on this side. Now we have lots of harness stuff over here. Okay, should be able to get on all the bolts. Let's see what happens. And I lied a little bit. I need to get this out of the way. Right, now we've got some clamps. Now what did we miss? Oh, there's some hose in the back. Hoses, that's what I meant to say. There's one, looks like crankcase vent. Well, that was easy and as you can see the port injection works really well at keeping everything clean I don't see any signs of chaos yet looks okay let's go to the other side yep same thing over here and everything looks quite tidy so far all right now I'm gonna take a minute or two or ten to get this harness off this engine. It'll look a lot cleaner once I get all of this wiring off. Next, I'm gonna remove this high pressure fuel line that connects both rails. I'm going to just drop like a dollar's worth of fuel. All right, next I'm going to work on this coolant crossover pipe here. I don't know how hard it's going to be to come out. Huh, that was uh, way too easy. All right, now it's time to remove the left hand valve cover. Okay, see that little bit of green at the top of that spring? I believe that means that these are original valve springs and this engine has not had the recall done. Now that doesn't mean that this engine is covered under the recall. I don't know if it covers all of them. This could have missed the recall, but these valve springs are original to the engine. I think the replacement springs are blue or maybe any other color but green. Greens are original. Overall, this is really clean in here. The cam lobes look good. I don't see anything too bad. What's odd is that there's a little bit of RTV on that camshaft. Why would that be if this hasn't had the recall done? Now for the right side. see anything broken in here. Everything looks really clean. I think it is time to get the timing cover off. Time for the timing cover. First thing we need to do is get this bracket out of the way so we got to get some of these pulleys out. Oh I, I think I got to take this out first. There's a hex bolt in the middle of this tensioner. Oh, I gotta remove the dipstick. 
Here we go. Now most import cars don't usually fight me too bad. You know what? It might just have to live like... Nope. Ow. I'll get the water pump pulley off. Now for the crank pulley. That was way too easy. It looks like I just have a whole bunch of 12 and 10 millimeter bolts to take out. Let's start with the tens. Okay, it looks like everything else is a 12 millimeter. Okay, did I get them all? I think I did. Oh, it has some dowels, so I gotta be careful. This timing cover is actually already sold. I don't even know where to start on this. Probably not in the middle. Okay, it's a little loose up here. It sure feels like there's still bolts holding this thing together, but I just don't see any. Sure, it's a little different when it's in the car and not on an engine stand. It has the best ABEC bearings available. Okay, maybe they're not ABEC bearings, but I don't really want to pry on anything with the mating surface. It's very tempting to just jam this pry bar in there and but we're not gonna do that. Oh, we're leaking. One. Ooh. Ooh, sparkles. Well, the timing cover looks pretty nice until you actually look at what the oil looks like. It's got some forbidden glitter in there. You can see some of it stuck on that pickup for the cam sensor. Oil's not supposed to be silver. And then there's even more on this side. Sparkles. The timing system looks pretty decent. All the rails look good, chains look good. But if you look at the top of that rail, Somebody put some bearing material there, or at least that's what I'm assuming at this point. And there's some more there and there. Everybody gets some bearing material. Let's uh, see if we can put this engine at TDC, or at least what I'm assuming is TDC, and then we'll rip all the chains and guides off. Well, I don't really want to tighten it any further since there's nothing here. I don't want to wreck the crank. Oh, wait. We're pretty sure the crank's wrecked anyway. Nope. I don't want to break that off. We'll just take it apart like this. It's fine. Well, I have no idea how tight or how strong these tensioners are, so we're just going to zip the bolts out and be well protected. Um, blue. Oh, that was all for nothing. Better safe than sorry. Wait, is that is that actually oil coming out of there, or is that water? Nah, that's oil. Well, again, that, that has a bunch of bearing deposits on it, but the rail looks really nice. There's not a lot of wear on it. This one now. Yeah, kind of same deal with this. I don't see any cracks. There's no chips, no salsa. And now we need to take that bolt out and that bolt out to get those rails off. But let's see if we can get the chains off first. One. 
And there's the other. Man. How many carrots would you say that is? Yeah, that rail's perfect. You can see shiny. It's like we've been panning for bearings. Here's a large deposit of forbidden glitter. You can see all of the bearing metals in there. Now we can start taking the heads apart. First, I'm going to remove this big plate. It takes a little more gusto than that. Now to get access to the head bolts, I need to pull the cams out. And to pull the cams out, I'm going to have to remove this plate and these cam caps. So we're going to get that done next. Every single one of those hissed at me. I see. Well, I have a tool for this. There's a little bitty ledge over here to pry on. This one is going to take a little bit of effort, but there is a place to pry. The cam journals look eh, okay, but you can definitely see that there's some debris in that oil. There's a little bit of damage, like something's run through there. All the rollers on the rockers look good. Yeah, you can see that collection of bearing material in that groove. Not good. And the cam caps show more damage. Pretty rough texture to some of these. Look at that. Grooved up pretty good. That one's probably the worst. Look at that cam journal. The lobes look okay, but the journals, they are pretty worn. Metal in the oil will definitely do this. It's really rough there. Now the nice thing about the design of these heads is that even though the journals have some damage and the caps have even more damage, I can remove that part of it from the head. So these can be completely wiped out and the heads could still be okay. So now we're going to remove this cam plate and then we have full access to the head bolts. Now this is held to the head with sealant. Is there a place to pry? Oh yes. Very much so. Do I like the place to pry? No. Now this gives us perfect access to the six cylinder head bolts. Oh no. Now I'm gonna remove these before they fall on the floor. Because they will. And let's pull the head. These have an MLS head gasket, which we could tell before we pull that. Now the cylinder head looks perfect. The block looks pretty good. The boards have a few vertical scratches. So you kind of see them there. Pistons look pretty good. Aren't these think these made contact with anything. Let's go to the other side. Now before we get too crazy, I need to get the high pressure fuel pump removed. 
Now I really hope I don't strip these out. Oh, no worries. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> oh man. And there's the pump and there's the roller. Ha, huh, like that's just gonna come off. It's got a dowel right there. It's fighting. What if? Taps right on the dowel. Are there two? Man, this does not want to let go. I don't know why. But it needs to, otherwise I can't get the cam cap off. What if I go like this? Seal into something else. Wow, that's a weighty piece. Ooh, something just hissed. Oh, I missed one. Oh, that popped off a lot easier. Always helps to get all the bolts out. Let go. What is, ow. Well. The journals get progressively more metallic. Look at all that. That one is really wiped out. The side is significantly worse. And it's very evident when you see the cam caps. The finish is super rough. Look at all that damage. And these have some like this paste. It's kind of like a, a metal. It looks like anti-seize, but you know, if you put anti-seize in an engine, it will seize. I promise. It does the opposite effect when you use it as unintended. Well, it looks like I'm going to remove this coolant pipe. So now that this is out of the way, I can not find anything else to pry on. There we are. There we were. This, this sealant is something else. Now I'm going to preemptively remove the rockers. Uh-oh, that's no good. Well, um, bad. On this head, there is a distinct difference between the way the combustion chambers look. This is okay, and this one has been smashed by the piston. You can see how it's shiny, the edges of the combustion chamber, and actually, Looks like it nicked the injector as well. I don't see any valve damage, so I don't think any valves hit the piston, but the head definitely took a hit. Now this doesn't usually render the head useless, but it should be checked by a machine shop. Now this cylinder has some clear damage. Lots of vertical scratches. If you look real close, see that little mark right there at the very top of the crown? Yeah, that's from the injector. That piston might actually have some cracks in it. It definitely hit that head hard. This one looks okay. Now let's turn this thing all the way over so we can pull that oil pan. Now there's, this has no drain bolt in it, so I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident that it's drained, but you never know. Yeah, it's not too bad. Peed on my foot though. Not cool. All right, let's get this water pump out of the way. Now we're going to be pretty gentle here. 
Water pump has some corrosion where the gasket sits, but it looks pretty good. Now it's time to remove the oil pan. Oh, well, we found it. Look at all this material in here. This is a lot of one bearing. I, this is probably both shells and it's like a sea of bearing. It's, it's the bearing sea. I think we're a little too far south for that, but this isn't even most of it. Look at, look at that, that. Whoa, get out of here. Look at that. Now, it looks like the entire bearing is here, but it's, it's just not in the same format as the rest of them. Let's remove the pickup now. Oh, yeah. Lots of bearings stuck in that screen. Sticking through it, there's... Yeah, that, that's not good. Now, I don't see that filled with RTV or anything like everybody alleges the new cars are like. Now we're going to remove the upper oil pan. All right, there appears to be a lot of places to pry from. So, which do I like the most? Not that one. Not that one. Huh. Oh, I see. This sealant is no joke. Well, the other side of the upper pan reveals, you guessed it, lots more bearing material. I am pretty certain we're not going to find any bearing material left when we get that rod off the crank. And even more. It's everywhere, except for where it's supposed to be. I don't think there's going to be any there. So the way these come apart, it's pretty similar to the EJ engines that I've taken apart on the channel where you have to split the wrist pin, you have to remove the wrist pin and split the piston from the rod. And to gain access, we're going to remove this cover and that should give us access to at least one of these. I don't really know how to get to the other one, but we'll find out. Huh. Well, I guess that's not how that works. Now, I thought this would come apart the same way as the EJs do, where you remove a cover and you have access to the wrist pin, but I don't think that's how this is going to come apart. I think I'm going to have to wrench the caps off and then split the block, and each block half will come out with the rod and piston, or maybe I can push them through and then split the block. Um, really not sure on that. I'm going to remove the other cover on the other side just to make sure. Yep, same deal on this side. So we're going to have to wrench these caps off, which look fun. We'll try to get those off. I'm not quite sure what kind of fastener that is or if I have one, but we'll get them off. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but we're going to try. And if it feels like it's going to round off, we're going to stop. I guess I should probably do that on the stand, but... Yeah, I guess we're going to have to put this back on the stand. That's, that's what we're going to do. Well, I got this back on the stand, and we're going to try once again to break these bolts loose. I don't really have a lot of faith in this. I feel like we're going to run into some problems here. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Mm-hmm, that was a mistake. Well, there are certainly fractured rods. Oh, I see. I see what's happening here. The bearings are bad. Let's rotate this away. Oh, 
Okay, now I have access to the back of that rod to push it out. Just, just push it out. Okay, we're coming out. Looks like we're past the second compression ring. Okay. Well, there's one. Now we're going to rotate this to see where I have access to the next one. Start at the rear. Wait, nope, that's still the front. You know what, I'm gonna remove this torque limiter. Ooh, didn't like that. Nope, we are not gonna strip that one out. Yeah, it doesn't appear that any of these are gonna wanna come off. Oh, man. Wow, these bearings. I'm surprised this thing turned over. Okay, that's not gonna work. Maybe we just try it where it sits. All right, now we're gonna get the rearest, rearest, most rear rod and piston out. I think this is the bad one. I mean, they're all bad, but this is the most bad. Huh, and it's gone. Okay, well, we're gonna rotate this engine to a uh, point where I have more access to the bottom of that rod. This still doesn't spin that great. And there's only one rod connected. All right, we have one left. Just like so. Oh man. Huh. I can't believe how worn these are. Every single bearing is absolutely destroyed. That one's just gone. And look at the coloration of that rod. That got super hot. All these are somewhat discolored, especially the second and fourth and the first. And all the pistons look to be okay, but when you get towards the back, there's some scratches on the skirt, some definite skirt wear. And then when you get to the worst one, that has some gouges right there. And then what's interesting is that E5H is an imprint from the valves. <laughs> it must have just hit it once. But you can see how shiny the crown of that piston is. That's from making contact with the cylinder head. And there's a little mark from the injector. Okay, now we'll take the block back off of this stand and set it on the table. So now I think I just have a lot of bolts 
to take out. We're gonna break these top block bolts loose first. Now, I have no idea how tight these are gonna be, but we're gonna try it with my 3 ratchet at first. Ha <laughs> ha! Where's the breaker bar? Now I know what you guys are saying. Why didn't I crack these loose when it was on the stand? And, well, you guys make a really, really good argument. Dinner's ready. All right, now we're gonna flip it around and see if there's any more on this side. I bet there is or not. That's it, that's, that's all of them. Huh, we'll just zip them out of the other side and then start beating this thing silly with a hammer. Did I miss one? <gasps> I missed some. Okay, so how do we get this apart? Attempt number one, blue. Attempt number two, hammer. That's not gonna work either. Let's see what something a little bit bigger does. I don't think this is gonna weigh enough for me to use this. No. Dang it. Well, let's uh, keep trying some stuff. That's working. Now, you guys don't worry about this block. It's not any good anyway. I've got a little bit of a gap. I don't really want to drive something in between, but we're going to drive something in between. And it's the crappiest screwdriver I have right now. I would never work on a good engine this way, just so you guys know. Absolutely not. Nope, that's not what you do. And we are still very sealed at the back. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Get a couple more taps over here. That's not going to do anything. This is coming apart, I, I promise. There's a doll right here, and the sealant probably. coming apart at the top. Oh, look at that. Oh, is it really gonna be the rear main seal that holds us up of all of the things? All right, now it's the rear main seal that's holding us up. So again, this is not how you do it. We are just breaking down a scrap engine at this point. Just see if that did anything. Oh, we made some movement here. And now we can probably get this, uh, this is not how you replace the remain seal. Just like to point that out. All right, there is the block half. Let's get my tools out of the way here. That's good for it. Wow, bearings do not look good. No surprise there. So the crankshaft, it's done. This is scrap metal, but we knew that. As soon as we saw all that bearing material, we knew that this was a goner. Really narrow main bearing journals. Look at the coloration on that crank. It's pretty, screwed up. And here's what the main bearings look like. They're just chewed up. That one's just gone. It's somewhere here. This is what happens when you don't have oil in your engine and you run it hard. I am not surprised to see any of this. And this paste, this is what came out of this engine. It's like this, it's like oil mud. It's got a texture to it. Something else worth mentioning, you see those two little marks 
at the center. That's from the bottom of the piston where the wrist pin bosses made contact because there were no bearings left on that journal which allowed the piston to travel up and hit the cylinder head and then travel down and smack the block. I'm amazed this held together. I am really surprised that this engine still ran. It took a lot of force to turn that crank over even after the rods and pistons were out. Now I, I wasn't there, but they told me they pulled it off the tow truck and right onto the rack to pull the engine out, which is pretty impressive. Just goes to show you what some of these engines will tolerate and still run, though I bet if it ran any longer it would have chucked a rod through the top or bottom of the block or just locked up completely. I never want to come off as preachy on this channel, ever. I, I don't want to tell you guys what to do or what not to do, but I really hate seeing people waste their money by not checking their oil. Almost half of the teardowns on this channel, or more, probably more, could have been avoided by simply checking and maintaining your oil level. I, again, I don't want to come off as preachy, but it takes just a second and it can save you from a very financially burdensome situation like this. These engines are $3,000, $4,000 or more depending on miles and they're, they're not around the corner. They're kind of tough to find because so many of them are bad and so many people are out looking for them. Now if you do need an engine for one of these cars, don't send me an email. I'm going to leave an email and a website in the video description to my friend Pete's Subaru only salvage yard. He's located in Mertztown, Pennsylvania. Uh, I talk to him all the time. You guys have heard of him before. At some point, I'm going to get him on the channel, I promise. I really hope you enjoyed this teardown. If you'd like to buy any remaining parts off of this engine, timing cover is going to Pete. Sorry, guys. But if you'd like to buy anything off of any of the other engines I've torn down or you need parts off of, we've got a manual XJ behind me, a Mazda Speed Miata, which will probably be in a video coming up soon. I'm going to leave our email in the video description and you can also go to importapart.com and peruse what we have. I've been uploading some of our recent arrival for full part outs on there. And if you don't see what you're looking for, you can fill out our part request form. It sends us an email with exactly what you're looking for. As always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all and I'll catch you on the next one.